am here at Aarhus University in Denmark, where some of the world's leading cryptographers are located. Um, and they are also helping to design the intricate math that will be part of the Concordia blockchain network. And I'm here today with Claudio Orlandi, and he is an associate professor here at Aarhus. And uh, Claudio heads the cryptographic pr protocol team at Concordium, so I'm really excited to be here today and speak with him. And research is a pretty big part of the Concordium project, mm -hmm. so uh, there are a lot of initiatives are happening around research. Can you speak about that? Right. So um, we're going to have a uh, Concordium Research Center here in Aarhus, and I'm very excited about that. Um, we're going to have uh, uh, the possibility to, to, to have a research team with PhD students and postdocs which will work on uh, uh, designing the next generation of uh, uh, cryptographic protocols for blockchains. Um, this is a great opportunity not only for Concordium but for the scientific community as a whole. Um, the strategy uh, 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 for Concordium will not be to patent any of the science which is produced here in OWS. So anything that, that will come out of this uh, uh, research effort we will actually be of the benefit of everyone. Cool. And then how do you get involved? I mean, are you just reaching out to other blockchain companies or how, how is this project going to get rolling? Right. So I think we are, um, the cryptographic uh, uh, community is, is uh, um, it's a very lovely uh, uh, community to work in. Um, historically, it's a relatively small community, research community compared to other. Um, and these days, uh, 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 most of the people who are working on, on on blockchains are one way or another connected to, uh, 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 to our research group in one way or another. Um, so what happened with blockchain is that blockchain have popularized the idea of decentralizing trust. Instead of putting all your trust in one single point of failure, um, blockchain decentralizes trust and, and, uh, uh, and have this threshold assumption as long as the majority of the people in the system behave honestly, then the system behaves honestly. Um, this is something that in the cryptographic community we have been studied for at least you know, 20, 30 years. So it's nice to see how uh, a lot of the research which uh, uh, took us here and a lot of the people who uh, have been on the journey with us to here are now uh, uh, going to contribute to the blockchain space. How is Concordium's blockchain network different than something like Bitcoin or... Right. So uh, uh, one of the main ingredients in any blockchain project is uh, uh, the consensus mechanism. Um, in any blockchain project, you need a way of deciding who is going to maintain uh, uh, the blockchain, who is going to create the next block. Uh, this typically happens with the lottery. Uh, um, and there are different kinds of lotteries. The traditional lotteries for Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, those are based on proof of work. Uh, those systems are quite wasteful because they use a lot of energy. Uh, whereas in Concordium, you're going to something which is uh, uh, many other blockchains, uh, second generation blockchains are now using, which is called proof of stake. I see. And then, so proof of stake, um, can you kind of go into that and tell me how it works? Right. So in, in proof of stake, um, the difference between proof of work and proof of stake is that uh, in any of the two systems, you need a way of uh, uh, limiting how much uh, voting power every person has. The goal is to prevent what is known as a civil attack, which means that one person can pretend to be many, many, many persons. So you need to uh, assign the voting power of every person needs to be uh, proportional to something that they cannot duplicate. Uh, uh, in proof of work, this thing that you cannot duplicate is how much computing power they have. In proof of stake, instead, is how much funds they have invested in, in the blockchain. So the more uh, uh, funds you have, uh, uh, the more voting power you get. Uh, does that lead to an issue where someone with more funds, with more money, has more voting power and, than, than someone without? I mean, does that kind of a paradigm where they pretty much the, the rich have the power? It, it, it might sound like, this and it, it, like that, and in some sense uh, it, it is true. So there are two things here which are, uh, uh, or maybe three, which are very important. The first one is that... Um, uh, 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 so proof of stake might not be the latest, the last word on, on consensus protocols. Uh, part of the Concordium project is, is a research center, and as part of this, uh, or mm, there are many other researchers in the world working on this, uh, um, so something else might come up, uh, we, we comes after proof of stake. Uh, but currently proof of stake is the best system we have. So um, the rationale is that the more you're invested in the system, the more you're interested in the system working smoothly. If you, uh, um, if you have a lot of stake in the system and then you, you, know, you screw up with the system, you're going to lose a lot of money. 
So, so that naturally gives an incentive for those who have uh, more stakes invested in the system into maintaining it. Uh, 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 it's working in a sound way. The other thing is the environmental perspective. So uh, proof of work and Bitcoin uses uh, uh, a really a lot of energy. Uh, um, some estimates have said that Bitcoin is using as much as uh, a country like Denmark or, 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 or Ireland. So keeping the system alive consumes more energy than the entire country together. So what kind of research projects are you currently working on for, for Concordium? So uh, we just put out a paper uh, online uh, together with two, two other uh, Concordium team members um, about privacy preserving proof of stake protocols. Cool, that sounds really interesting. Can you explain more about that? Right, so in, in traditional proof of stakes protocols, um, uh, the, the winning probability uh, that any user will have in the system is proportional to how much money they have. Mm -hmm. um, this means that when someone, uh, uh, to be able to run this kind of proof of stake protocol, uh, the amount of money that uh, uh, people have in their accounts must be public. Oh, I see. But that kind of creates a problem for people who want to preserve their privacy. Exactly. So that's exactly also what we thought about, uh, that if you want to have a system in which privacy is embedded by design, then the proof of stake protocol you're using uh, uh, must uh, work even when the, 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 the amounts uh, or the balance that the different account have is not publicly visible. Okay. And so how do you get around that then? So it's a bit complicated because there are actually two problems. One is uh, hiding uh, the value itself. The other one is some kind of, you know, uh, uh, how often does someone win? Even if, you're, even if I cannot see how much money you have, but I can see that you win every second block, mm. then I will infer that you probably have half of the money, right? Yeah. Because if you win every second time, you probably have, you know, if you, if you have 50% chances of winning, then you probably have half of the money. So it's not just about hiding how much money you have, but it's also about hiding who wins and when. Mm -hmm. Because the, the information of who wins actually uh, 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 discloses some information about how often people win. Right, so how do you hide that then? So that's, 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 that's quite technical. Uh, um, um, so we use this, 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 uh, uh, you know, this uh, wonderful uh, uh, idea that we have in cryptography, which is the, 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 the zero knowledge pro protocols. Mm. So zero knowledge proofs are this wonderful concept in modern cryptography, which were invented uh, maybe 30 years ago. Uh, and they allow to prove the validity of some statement without leaking any information except the validity of the statement itself. Okay, so if someone does end up winning a lot, um, but nobody, nobody will see that person is winning mm -hmm. all those instances. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so you will need, uh, need to both prove that you won, and mm -hmm. then every time you win, uh, um, have a way of, uh, uh, it should not be possible to link the different accounts that win, so that if the same person wins over and over again, every time they win, it should not look like as if it's the same person, right? Every time yeah. it should look like as if it's a new person. Um, this is a challenge, right? Because you, you're always winning with the same account. You have some account mm -hmm. and you have some balance in this account. And this is the account that, and the balance that is giving you, that is allowing you to win. So somehow when you prove that you won the lottery next time, you still have to refer to that account. But you have to do it every time in such a way that uh, no one can see uh, uh, that this is happening over and over again. That sounds really difficult. Sounds like um, you have to have almost infinite amounts of you know, like uh, ways of showing, demonstrating that. Right, right, and that's and that's uh, that's the other uh, another technical component which we use in this paper, which is this uh, uh, other component which is present in many uh, uh, cryptographic protocols and, and blockchain construction, which are Merkle trees, which are ways of uh, uh, um, condensing a very large amount of information, or possibly. Uh, uh, exponentially large amount of information into a very, very tiny, tiny commitment to this large information. And then you can prove that some information is inside this commitment mm -hmm. uh, only using very few bits. Um, it's it's some, some way of, of compressing a huge amount of information into a small commitment, and then you can still prove that this information is in there. So in, in our case, you would be able to prove that uh, um, you own a balance, which was condensed in this, let, let's call it Merkle tree, mm -hmm. um, without revealing which one. Well, that's a really great explanation. I learned a lot and I hope you did too. So thank you so much, Claudio, for being here.